Hello and welcome everyone to what? Yes, it is the Transform Your Relationships live show. I'm Laura Rubenstein and this is the awesome and wonderful Dr. Roberta Shaler. How are you doing? I'm uh, okay. <laughs> Hanging in there, I know. Um, we have um, an exciting show today because it's in this trio. We're talking about, um, last week we talked about sabotage, success is this week, and then we'll go into significance um, in our next show. Do we want to recap a little bit about the sabotage? Because I think that'll lead nicely into our success. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's important for us to remember about sabotage because it's such an insidious thing. It just happens and we don't really become aware of it and we need to be really aware of how we stop ourselves how we prevent ourselves how we don't engage uh, the excuses we use the procrastination that we have so many things that will make it so that we can talk a good talk but our walk gets a little wobbly yeah, I liked what we talked about last week where we talked about identifying the patterns of sabotage, in particular when we are blaming others or we're taking a look outside of ourselves um, we're at circumstances and, oh, if only this would change, if only they would change, then you might want to look at your own self because that is a sabotage pattern if you're always at the effect of it, of something else. Yeah, that's right. And when we think that everybody else is controlling our lives, we're making a big mistake because actually you're in charge. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you're giving away uh, the power in your own life, it's time to empower yourselves and take it back and say, no, I can do this differently. And sometimes you need a little help. Sometimes you need to work with somebody who will help you uncover your unconscious sabotage patterns so that you don't even realize that you're doing it and you you really mean what you say and you know i'm on my own team and i'm going great guns but there are some things that are just so deeply entrenched in you you might not notice so it's a good thing to get an outside point of view to get some new eyes on what's going on when you find yourself a little bit stuck or if you think you might be self-sabotaging yeah that word stuck is key because we want to go from stuck and self-sabotaging to success. And I loved what you said, because when we we're, we, we are in control, if we want to be, <laughs> um, if we say it's somewhat outside of our control, we just control that it's not under, we just control that. I mean, there's, that's what we said. Okay, I can't, I can't be a success. If you're blaming someone else and, or a circumstance, you're saying, I can't be a success. We need to turn that around and say, okay, I want to be a success, so what What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Or what's getting in my way? Or mm. what have I put in my way? You know, what are the, the beliefs that I have that are completely coming from within me that is, as you said, setting unconscious intentions? Like, this will never work. Or this will take too long. Or I don't know what to do. Well, figure it out, go get some help. <laughs> and you know, it's not because you and I help people that I say that. It's that we need someone from outside of us to ask questions. I call Laura all the time and say, I need to borrow your brain. <laughs> and she kindly lets me rent her brain for a little while so that I can figure something out. And that's the kind of relationships you want, whether or not you need a coach over time or you just have is somebody that you can call occasionally, but you need qualified help that you know can help from the point of view that you need the help, not not just a friend who says, oh, okay, it'll be all right, or you can do it, you can do it, but can actually help you uncover what's in the way. And that's or, the sabotage part. Yeah, or a friend who's going to continue the sabotage by affirming, yes, you poor thing, I'm so sorry, I am totally get where you're at, and I'm, I know, you know, there's nothing you can do, you know, <laughs> that's a nice friend, it's not the one who's going to help you get to success, so, and break those patterns, and if you're ready to have success, there is a pattern, and you haven't had it, and there's a pattern of non-success, 
uh, then it's time to cop to it if you want to break the pattern and move right. beyond yeah. that. It can be scary though. Sure, it's scary. It's always scary. Change is scary. And to actually think that you might be in your own way, that's a really big growth point if you can realize that. And maybe it's something your mother said to you long ago that you've now taken into your repertoire and you keep repeating it and you just need help to see that. But like Laura said, you know, if you have friends who will there there you and say, oh, yeah, the world is a terrible place. And, you know, I understand completely. Uh, make sure that those friends then say, and how can I help you? And what do you need to think about? And let's brainstorm what you can do, because a good friend will do that. They'll they'll empathize with you for a moment or two, and then they'll say, hey, we're not leaving you there. Let's get moving in a better direction. <laughs> You know, one of the things we're, we're, we're kind of talking through here is how we use the power of questions. Nice. And I think, I think the power of questions is so huge. Uh, they can take us from, they can do one of two things. So they can either expand us or they can shrink us. So it really depends on the question. Don't ask the question, why can't I? Why, woe is me? Why me? Those, there's like, I, there's the gas and the, and the brake, right, in our cars. Those are the brake questions. That'll put your brain on halt and say, yeah, poor me, I'm just a failure, whatever the words are in your head. But the questions are that say, I wonder how or what is possible here? What do you want? Let's get clear. <laughs> um, those turn on the gas. So we want to be asking accelerator questions so that your brain can actually do the job. And sometimes, uh, maybe a lot of times, I'm going to say what's more, most powerful is the question, not the answer. Yeah, I agree with you. The being able to ask yourself or someone else good questions that move people forward uh, and just fires up the brain with possibilities. And that's what you want. And just to start thinking in a different way, to have a different perspective, to begin possibility thinking, if you've been in scarcity thinking, uh, it not necessarily is the immediate answer, but the question is invaluable. In fact, I even say, if the answer isn't coming to you, ask, keep asking the question, keep refining the question. It's like, because you might not have the right question. The answer is right in front of us, but we oftentimes can't see it because we're not asking the question. So like the answer might be blue glass with water, <laughs> but I don't know that's the answer because I haven't asked the question that this is the answer to. I know that's kind of abstract, but I, for example, I had a client um, who was in a jewelry business and she was really struggling with one way to get this jewelry done. And um, I said, well, what is it? What do you really want to do? And she said, I need a way to be able to solder this and that. And I don't even remember what it was. And I said, okay, well, just stay in that question. Like, I wonder how you can get that done. She said, okay, because I, I, you know, I, I don't have an answer right now. I said, just keep with that question. She was flipping through a magazine and wouldn't you know, she never looks at advertisements. For some reason, maybe because she had planted the seed of the question, an advertisement for a piece of equipment that said exactly what she does, and she knew she, she knew of this machine, but she wouldn't have never associated it before she asked the question to herself of how can I get this project done? Or I wonder what it would take. This machine, you know, piece of equipment helped her. So the question is your power tool in, in getting success in those toughest questions sometimes. And, and, and just be okay with not having an answer right away. And if you're yeah. not okay, work on a better question. <laughs> work on a different question. It's sure, just like, okay, yeah. well, I want to answer. Okay, well, let's ask a different question that your brain can actually work on. Not yeah. the big question, but the real question. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, what you said is so important because really what you're saying is sit with yourself, give yourself some time, just stop and listen and see what's in there and accord yourself that, that value. <clears throat> Many people don't do that. They want to grab and run, grab and run. But if you spend time with the question, if you really look at 
at the question and let the answers come because you've given yourself the leisure. That's a real gift. And it may prove very productive time as well. I love that. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Gail Watson. Hi, thanks for watching of Women's Speakers Association. And Hi, if you Gail. are, <laughs> if you're watching today and you have any questions, I am monitoring us at Transform Your Relationships Live. Uh, that's the Facebook page, Transform Your Relationships Live on Facebook. And uh, we're happy to, you know, answer your questions. If you have challenging questions about how to create success, Get out of sabotage, create success. That's our topic today. And if you want to share where you're tuning in from and just say hello, we love your comments and your likes and your loves um, on the video as well. So thanks for being here. All right, Roberta, what's next on our creating success? Well, I think really important for us to creating success is to know what it means to us. You know, it's a lovely nebulous term and we can throw it around, but if it's not measurable to us, we'll never achieve it. So what is success to you? How, how will you know when you're being successful or you are a success or there is success in your life or your relationships or your business? That's another question that you have to sit with because there is no right answer. There's only your answer. So how would you know if you're successful? How, what would it mean to you, Laura? It's a huge question because we have so many layers. There's a lot of layers in that question. There's like, what would my parents think? What did I? What was I raised in society to think? Success is making a six or seven figure income. Success is um, having a big house and being financially independent. You know, like those are the things that come up for me as a societal. You know, but for me, if I sat with myself and I said, okay, what is success? Am I an honest person? Do I have people who love me in my life? Am I able to give and uh, give freely of my time and my, um, you know, whatever resources I want to give or gifts I want to give? Do I have, um, am I living with integrity? Do I feel good about myself? I mean, I think that's at the top of the list. Do I feel good about myself? Um, <laughs> so I think it's very personal. That's for me. I wouldn't want to put that on anybody else. Uh, but I think it's a loaded question, Roberta. It's really hard to, to answer that question and feel, I feel a little vulnerable here and a little um, like I might be judged and, and like I'm only hoping that other people are like, oh, I might take that one on or maybe there's another idea. Like, I don't know that I've ever really clearly defined my, what success means other than what I've just said right now. Well, and you said some really important pieces for people to capture, but let's start with another one. How about balance in your life? Would you think you were successful if you had balance in your life, that you actually had time to earn a living at a level that you like, and you had time to play and enjoy and volunteer and be present and do nothing? Maybe that's one way to measure success. <clears throat> or am I always running after the dollar or running after something and I never allow myself to stop? Or maybe I'm successful because, as you said, somebody loves me and I love somebody and I have the ability to think about that relationship and see what do I bring, what can I bring, and there's success in that area of my life. And we can have success in different areas or we can have su a successful life. But there's no right answer. So for for any anybody beginning the process, just start thinking about the various aspects of life. My partner and I wrote a book called Soul Solitude. And in that book, we talk about the nine arenas of life. And so you might find success in each one of those nine arenas. And maybe you start in just one and you do that well. Like I feel really successful if my kitchen's clean all the time. <laughs> You oh, know. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> because for me, I'm on the go a lot. And when I can say, all right, I took care of the hub of my home because I'm really into nutrition and healthy things as you are, Laura. So if my kitchen is in order and there's groceries and nothing is missing, that's a success to me. But if the dishes pile up in the sink and and I've just been ignoring it, I know I'm not taking care of myself well. 
So it's something as simple as that maybe that you can look at. You know, it doesn't have to be grandiose and world changing. It needs to be something that makes you feel good, makes you feel like you're on the right path and that things are in alignment with your values. So that's one of the ways that you can know if you're successful, if you're living from your values. I think that's the simplest definition for to reframe success in the society is are you living from your values? And when you live from your values, well, typically I find people are much more happy. So to me, I mean, I think my instinctive answer, which I felt was like too unexplained was, am I happy? <laughs> if I'm not happy, I'm not successful. Um, yeah. Well, I would, I would have a question about that because we can trick ourselves into thinking we're happy doing nothing, right? And we have to really sit with that question. Am I happy um, is a whole big ball of wax to deal with <laughs> because you can be happy in the moment, but maybe you're not happy overall. And so that's another one of those terms that is so global that we have to reduce it to what it means in our life. You know, I can, I can be happy because I'm taking two hours off and that's wonderful. I can be happy that I am having leisure and at the back of my mind is going, yeah, but you got all that stuff to do and I haven't taken care of things. So success, it really requires our attention to really understand what it is for us and how to measure it because being able to measure it, and I don't mean that, you know, you have to have ridiculous number of goals and you track them over time and you really get into the analytics you have to know how will i know when i'm successful what will i feel like what will i have achieved what will i have finished what will i have on the horizon and those things are are really criteria for determining your success. And nobody can do that for you. You have to do it yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like pressure. I'm like, I don't want to put um, goals to my success or happiness. It's like, I just want to be happy. But I think, I'm not saying one shouldn't. Uh, I'm thinking, I think that could be a trap too, because you could get to all these measurable places and then not really feel happy or successful, even though on paper, you look happy or successful. Yeah, so well, how do we get those two to align? <laughs> you know, that's a great question because you brought it up earlier. I mean, <clears throat> if I, if I'm living up to somebody else's expectations rather than my own, I'm not going to be happy. So I have to look at that in my quiet reflective time that we're encouraging today. Uh, who, whose expectations am I living and whose definition of success? You know, you said it earlier. There's lots of magazines and, and podcasts and shows and gurus that say, you know, well, <clears throat> you're just, you've got to go for success and it looks like this and you have to have all this money and you have to have a list this large and you have to reach this many people and you have to be, you know, all of those have to's in order to be successful. But if I'm living by their expectations and I haven't thought it through for my life, then I will always come up short. So maybe you're living from the expectations of your parents. That could be true. As an adult, it's time to figure out what did they give me that I want to keep and what would I like to just give back or let go of? that doesn't work for me and begin to look at where those expectations got implanted and whether or not you want to keep them because you can run yourself ragged living up to the expectations of others. And that's something we have a couple of chapters on in soul solitude because that's not the deal. You're not here to live someone else's life. You're here to live yours. And if you're living up to somebody else's expectations, you're never going to really arrive because that's not intrinsic to you. 
Now, I know a lot of coaches and consultants, and maybe yourself do this, um, you take like those nine areas and you rank where you are and where you want to be in those. And then would this be a good way to put the measure in? Like, okay, so where you want to be, you know, is kind of your success goal in each of those areas. It could well be. And, and remembering that in those nine areas, there is like emotional well-being is one of the areas so it's balanced really balanced and that's the important thing that's why i brought it up earlier balance is absolutely key if you're working all the time i hope it's only for a maximum of four weeks because <laughs> you really want to get something done or you have you have to front load a project or whatever but if it's all the time then you're running too fast so these nine areas i don't know if you want to cover them or not but no, I don't. <laughs> okay. So, like, if we were going to be a 10, I mean, wouldn't we have to, to be a success? Wouldn't we have to say we have to be at a 10 in all? And is that really possible? No. Um, maybe it's just taking one step at a time, one step further than I am right now. Or maybe I'm happy if they're all a six, you know, so that I have balance in my life. See, again, we don't want to be living up to some artificial expectation of you should be a 10. No, you need balance. If you've got one that's an eight and one that's a two, fix that, right? Get some balance. Raise the raise the areas that are most needy and most important. I think, though, a lot of times, um, you know, if one of the areas is family and you don't have much family and that's not a big value for you, then it can be added to and you could be fine with that. You know, if, and yeah. other people, it, family is a be, 10. Yeah. Except that, you know, in the nine, uh, it's relationships, so it's not family. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can, you, you, you have to have enough relationships that make you feel connected and that have people who lift you up. But if you run around and go to every networking event in the world and think that everybody has to like you, then that's completely out of balance, right? So each one of us has to determine what is right for me. And I know that sounds nebulous, but it always comes back to doing your own work, to sitting with yourself and thinking things through and talking with people who know you well and and ask, getting them to ask you questions or asking them questions. But work on it. Work on it because you matter. You are so important and you have the opportunity of a lifetime. And what are you using it for? If you're living up to somebody else's expectations, you're living their life, not yours. <laughs> this is a really grown up conversation. You know, it's not the conversation of live up to your societies and parents and what you think should be levels of success. This is a grown up taking a serious heart centered look, you know, nurturing look at your own life and desires, dreams, hopes, goals and saying, really, do I need that? Like I, where I started to be, do I need the six or seven figure income? Really? <laughs> or do I just want it because I want to look good to others? Well, and I could give you an example from my life right there. You know, six years ago, I had on my books, oh, I'm going to train coaches to do what I do. And I'm going to have this big business and it's going to be you know, bigger and bigger and more and more wonderful. And then one day I sat down, I took a few days away and I looked at it and said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to manage people. I don't want to, I can't get them to behave like me. So therefore, would I trust them if I did teach them the information? I had to think it all through and I was so happy to come to the place that, no, I'm happy with a practice that is this full you know, that has this many clients a week and that I can do these things and make an impact on the world and change lives and still have downtime and friend time and beauty time and self-reflection time. And so ask yourself, because that was an old thing that I had in the back of my mind. It was almost a should. Because I could, I should. And that's not a good idea. <laughs> not a good idea. I have a similar example. I, you know, for years was in, very heavily involved in a network marketing company, and that's all 
build the dream. You know, I bought into the dream of being financially independent and having this major income. And it, you know, and the, the business was, you know, good business. Was it my passion to sell this product? You know, I love the idea of helping people and growth, but I really had to let go of the organization's dream for me and say, what is my dream for me? And how, and, and the universe actually helped me because the universe was showing me my own business at the time. And I was getting a lot more success in that versus my own network marketing business, which I was using the same like sales marketing and prospecting techniques, but I got a heck of a lot more results in the area I was gifted and talented and um, called to do. So I, I got the message. I said, okay, universe, I, you know, this lure of this dream is so compelling. It feels so much like me, but it wasn't actually expressing all that I was. So I had to shift my energies and where I was focused and re remind myself, you know, what? I'm living pretty good, making a living. And it's not the, you know, seven figure residual income living. That's okay. You know, <laughs> and I had exactly. to stop myself out of that dream, that other person's dream, other organization's dream. Sure. And you know, when we're learning, we go to seminars and we pick up all this information and we can pick up a lot of shoulds there too. You know, I, I did internet marketing seminars for years and years and I'd come back and, and I think, oh, I ought to do this and I should do this and, and there's not enough of that and I've got, oh, it would drive me crazy. And eventually, you know, I learned, thank heaven, about eight years ago that I just pick and choose what feels right to me and try it out. And if it works, great, tweak it, carry on. Because you can drive yourself crazy with different people's methods. Just take them as advisement for, does this one feel right to me? Does this one feel in integrity for me? Does it suit my business? And does it suit the outcomes that I want? And don't get all involved in the shoulds and the musts and all of that that will help you go crazy thinking that you're not successful because you didn't do it their way. And if you have the thought, like, oh no, I'm missing out, that fear of missing out as we like to call the FOMO, it, you have to check in, is this based on a should, I should know this, I should go to that, I should be at this level of success. And I think the focus on the JOMO, which is the joy of missing out, which is focusing on what does bring you joy and fulfillment is, is really a, a good practice or muscle, mental muscle to start cultivating because we have to really say, okay, I'm feeling, it's so natural to feel this lack of something if we don't do whatever, go to that networking event or stress ourselves out with working more than we should or we that we feel good or is good for our body. So um, I want to invite people to check out what is the joy of missing out? What are you actually saying to yourself? What is, is that helping you with your true success to miss out on something and, and see if you can kind of train your brain to really focus in on what's important. Yeah. And that may be taking care of yourself today, not pushing yourself to go to that networking luncheon, but saying, I don't feel well. I'm going to stay home, not let me psych myself up and drag my body there, but let me listen to what the joy of missing out would provide for me, which is rest in that case. <laughs> and, and it's a good test to go back to your values, like versus a sabotage pattern, because we, we can also use that as a sabotage pattern. So it's very, we have to be really clear. What are we doing here? Are we sabotaging or are we going for our, our truth and values and taking care of ourselves. So that's why uh, it takes time because you've got to think through all those pieces. You know, am I making an excuse here or is this valid? And I believe this, you know, you've got to go through that. That's why sometimes it's so, imp well, not sometimes it is important to get help. And you have to do it when you actually, uh, at not, not just once, it's not a one time deal. We are human dynamic beings that are prone to the fear of missing out, the 
you know, the, the shoulds, the society things, the, the new uh, shiny objects. And it's okay, but then if we take that time to sit back and reflect and say, where, where am I going? Am I going into a sabotage pattern? Why, what is underneath that? What's motivating it? Is it me? Is it my truth? Is it, you know, a fear? Is it for really what's in alignment with me? And so, um, you know, and sometimes we're better at doing that than others. So we have to, the more we practice it, the more aligned we can get, but we're never going to be perfect. I, I want to never, um, I shouldn't say never. Being perfect is setting yourself up for, you know, like, oh, just giving up, right? So just allowing that this is a process and it's natural to sometimes be more in alignment than others. But as we as we keep coming back, what we're Roberta, you and I are inviting everybody to do, and we're inviting ourselves to keep doing, is to keep coming back to ourselves, keep coming back because we're going to go astray here and there, and that's why you know I call you, you call me, we take that time. Um, we sometimes we don't take the time, and we get to see, oh, I wasn't really in alignment there, and that's a gift in and of itself to ourselves to recognize where we. We went out of alignment so we can get better the next time or prevent it the next time. And remember, too, that this is all a journey, not a destination. It's going to be something that you're going to do over and over and over. And that's the joy of it. That's not the drudgery. That's the joy of it. Like, oh, I can refine this. Oh, things have changed. Oh, I'm, I, made, I made my financial goals. Now would I like a little more leisure? You're always revisiting it because it is a journey, not a destination. You never are completely there. You're always in the process. And that's a great place to end today for our show, for creating success. Stay in alignment. Keep, keep on the journey because what's next in our journey is getting to significance. So we have visited with sabotage and how to uh, quell that. We are increasing our success by visiting our what's in alignment and next time in two weeks we will visit significance creating significance i love that anything you want to say on that i know it's a very exciting thing because you may not have really thought about it in the terms we're going to put it out there how significant are you and what kind of significance are you wanting to create and uh, join us next time so we can talk about that with you. And remember, you can join us live so you can ask your questions and we'll answer them right there and then. So if you have questions, we're at Transform Your Relationships Live on Facebook. Uh, we certainly will check our messages there and feel free to let us know what your takeaways are from today, what you're starting to think about for significance. And we'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. for now.